think, with just what was happening in his face. And I used to give him a hard time about the chemical peels and everything else, and he always would tell me things. So we know a lot about Michael Jackson, and you were just talking about him. What on those albums, Thriller for example, is you? Do you think he was so emotionally fragile because of his relationship with his father? I know he often talked about how tough his father was. His writing, no, 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 some no, of his but look, We take his stuff and take it to another level. There is unequivocally no justification for the reprehensible allegations of CA attributed to Michael Jackson during his adulthood. Nevertheless, it is evident from reports that Michael Jackson also endured CA. Reports of the beatings he suffered at the hands of his father, Joe Jackson, have been widely documented. Yet, as per various sources, including Quincy Jones, the childhood trauma he endured went well beyond what may have been commonly known. Apparently, this might have contributed to the star not being too attracted to women. He wanted to look different, you know, and I, I guess that's a sort of a self, uh, uh, I don't know, self-destructive self in a way. Yes. There is scarcely a corner of the pop music world that Jones hasn't directly influenced or left his mark upon, not to mention his noteworthy contributions in the realm of cinema and television, earning him Oscar and Emmy nominations for his work in groundbreaking projects such as The Color Purple and Roots. Sharing laughter, engaging in chatter, and savoring his own good fortune, it's almost as though Jones himself can hardly fathom the extraordinary life he has led. You look back and you've got all that material. You, know, you put all of the, the elements together at first and you say, Oh my God, all the singers and songs and records and everything. This is, you know, it's 500 some albums, you know. Naturally, in a career as extensive as his, there have been obstacles and controversies along the way, and certain subjects remained off limits, such as the allegations of S.A. involving one of his most iconic collaborators, Michael Jackson. However, the renowned and candid figure of Hollywood had plenty to share on a wide array of Jackson's life, and especially his difficult childhood. Michael Joseph Jackson came into the world in Gary, Indiana, an industrial suburb of Chicago, Illinois, on August 29, 1958. He was born into a working-class family, the seventh of nine children, to Joseph Walter Joe and Catherine Esther. I have seen many worlds, not just one. I mean, imagine, from the age of five, you've been able to create a whole world. Jackson's journey as a singer began in his childhood. And as time passed, his voice and vocal style underwent noticeable transformations, influenced either by the natural changes of puberty or a personal inclination to adapt his singing to the themes and genres he sought to convey. You were? Oh. Well, who else do you think makes the stage come to real life besides me and Ed Sullivan? His musical aptitude became evident at a young age when he took the stage during a Christmas recital at just five years old captivating classmates and other attendees with his vocal talents. In 1964, Michael, along with his brother Marlon, became part of the Jackson Brothers, a band that included his brothers Jackie, Tito, and Jermaine. In this ensemble, Michael played congas while Marlon handled the tambourine, providing their musical talents as backup musicians. Yes, well, uh, it's pretty sunny out here. I like it a little bit better. But his childhood was more than this. During a TV interview, living with Michael Jackson, Michael stated he was beaten by his father. He was so terrified he became physically ill when he saw him. When asked about his mother, he said he could hear her screaming, stop, you're going to K him. Strong parents are, I think, are very important, especially in our situation. If he hit me, I would hit him back. In Michael Jackson's life, we have witnessed a unique and deeply troubling narrative of A unfolding before our eyes. This story traces the trajectory of a once adorable young boy, whose father, Joe Jackson, was notorious for physically abusing him. Shockingly, Michael grew up to become one of the most notorious figures associated with abuse in the modern music industry. During an interview, Quincy himself said, I freaked out, he said. You know, I couldn't believe it. No, it was heavy, really heavy. Because boy, the relationship between a producer and an artist is really special, and there's no room for BS at all. It's got to be pure. It's got to be love and respect and amazing mutual respect for each other because that's what makes a good record. When they trust each other and you tell them to jump without a net, boy, you better know what you're talking about. Many reports show that Joe Jackson was part of a lineage of nightmarish fathers within the realm of celebrity families. Perhaps his only rival for the title of the most horrendous famous dad in history is Murray Wilson, the father of the Beach Boys Dennis, Carl, and Brian. 
Murray's cruel punishments included unsettling acts, such as popping out his glass eye and forcing his sons to gaze into the empty socket. Practice this with a belt in his hand. And if you miss a step, expect to be... Uh... The cruelty inflicted by Joe Jackson was so extreme that even when Michael was in his 40s, he would confide in people that the mere thought of his father made him feel physically ill. This is hardly surprising given the harrowing A he endured as a child, subjected to various forms of violence that included beatings with a range of objects, from belts and electric cords to tree branches. He would tear you up if you missed. And so we, not only were we practicing, we were nervous rehearsing. Additional and highly controversial claims have been made regarding Michael Jackson, suggesting that he was chemically removed his private parts as a child by his father. These assertions come from Conrad Murray, who served as the pop icon's doctor at the time of his passing. Murray, in footage acquired by the celebrity website The Blast, went as far as branding Joe Jackson as one of the worst fathers to his children in history. Do the people intend on calling any, <clears throat> excuse me, any other witnesses in this case? No, Your Honor. It's important to note that Conrad Murray was convicted of Michael's involuntary manslaughter and received a four-year prison sentence for administering the sedative propofol to the King of Pop before he experienced a cardiac arrest in June 2009. He ultimately served two years of this sentence. These claims and Murray's opinions are part of a larger and contentious discussion about Michael Jackson's life and upbringing. The court no longer has to weigh what are called aggravating circumstances or factors versus mitigating circumstances or factors, but has to give a statement of reasons. The notion that Joe Jackson, Michael Jackson's father, chemically removed his private parts of his preteen son in an attempt to preserve his high tenor voice is a conspiracy theory that has circulated for several years. The theory suggests that chemical removal of his private parts was used to maintain the childlike quality and impressive falsetto agility of Michael's voice. While this theory has taken various twists and turns, it's important to consider the facts regarding chemical removal of his private parts and the available evidence. But this is what Joe wrote Logan said. You know my theory about Michael Jackson? Tell me. People are gonna don't say it again. Tell me everything. I think he's a castrato. I What's think that? he had his ball removed. I think that's why his voice was so high. Chemically removal of man's private parts typically involves the administration of anti-androgen drugs to reduce or suppress the production of male hormones testosterone. The intended effect is to reduce S desire and behavior in individuals with certain conditions, including it is not typically used to preserve a high singing voice. In 2016, Conrad Murray, Michael Jackson's doctor, claimed in his book, This Is It, The Secret Lives of Dr. Conrad Murray and Michael Jackson, that Joe Jackson had Michael undergo hormone injections at the age of 12 using a chemical medicine, which is used to remove the parts. These injections were alleged to be for acne treatment and to prevent Michael's voice from changing during puberty. Of course, um, the most hidden treasure trove of his life is with me, but I have protected Michael up till now. Michael Jackson's vocal range has been the subject of debate among fans and singing experts. While he possessed an impressive vocal range covering three to four octaves, it is not uncommon among accomplished singers. Artists like Freddie Mercury and Chris Cornell also demonstrated similar vocal ranges. One of Michael's fans wrote, Michael Jackson's regular voice was deep, typical male tone. He was not a castrato. He used the highly pitched voice we all know to protect his singing voice and a sort of a mask comfort blanket to hide and protect his vulnerability from the public. His high pitched voice was a part of the character he portrayed when entertaining. He spoke about this and explained why he used his high-pitched voice all the time while he was in public, with cameras everywhere. It was basically protecting his NIL, name, image, likeness, because fans believed it was real and that's how he got paid. The theory that Michael Jackson's voice was a result of chemical removal of his private parts gained traction in 2011 when French doctor Alain Branchereau suggested that Jackson's voice resembled that of a castrato. He hypothesized that Jackson may have been administered the anti-male hormone cyproterone as an acne treatment at age 12, which could have maintained a higher pitch in his voice. When he died, I realized that he was an unusual phenomenon. Alain Branchereau, an opera buff and professor of vascular surgery at Timoni University Hospital in France's Mediterranean port of Marseille, told AFP. I said, that's the voice of a castrato. However, this theory has faced skepticism and challenges. 
The drug mentioned by Broncharo was still in clinical trials in the early 1970s when Jackson was 12. Furthermore, it's worth noting that everyone in the Jackson family had higher-pitched voices, including his daughter Paris, so the theory that they were all castrated raises questions. What well, the paper that they were using to wipe their, their private areas, that he was penniless. In 2016, a Broadly article revisited these claims and noted that while it's possible that the Jackson family may have used an experimental drug for off-label acne treatment, the autopsy report released in 2009 did not indicate any abnormalities with Michael Jackson's larynx. The illusion of an idyllic family life surrounding Michael Jackson and his siblings basically began to shatter in 1991 when Latoya Jackson published her memoir, Growing Up in the Jackson Family. In this book, as well as in subsequent media interviews, Michael's sister bravely revealed the dark secrets of their family. She disclosed that she had experienced essay at the hands of her father, Joe Jackson, and her brother Michael had been subjected to physical beatings. This revelation was a pivotal moment that cast a stark light on the family's troubled history, dispelling the facade of a perfect family image that had been maintained for years. You know all those big award shows? Michael would go, get all these awards and go home and get beaten up by Joseph. It was embarrassing, Latoya told Associated Press in 1991. It didn't matter how old you were. If he's mad, my father would just punch you. In the past, Joe and his wife Catherine consistently denied any allegations of child abuse concerning their nine children. However, in 1993, Michael opened up to Oprah, revealing that he had experienced extreme fear when around his father, leading to physical distress. Furthermore, in a 2003 interview with British journalist Martin Bashir, part of the documentary Living with Michael Jackson, Michael recounted a disturbing childhood memory of his father holding a belt during the Jackson 5's dance rehearsals, poised to administer physical punishment for any errors he was tough how often would he beat you mm, too much more details about these abusive incidents came to light in recorded conversations between Michael and his religious advisor Rabbi Shmuley Botich which were made public in 2009 shortly after the pop stars passing he was rough the way he would beat you you know was hard Michael said according to excerpts published by CNN he would make you strip first he would oil you down it would be a whole ritual he would oil you down so when the flip of an ironing cord hit you you know and it was just like me dying and you had whips all over your face your back everywhere and I always hear my mother like no Joe you're gonna K him you're gonna K him no and I would just give up like there was nothing I could do and I hated him for it hated him we all know that at the tender age of eight, Michael Jackson, the youngest member of the Jackson 5, took to the stage alongside his older brothers Tito, Jackie, Jermaine, and Marlon in the mid-1960s. This marked the beginning of his journey into a life consumed by touring, singing, and producing chart-topping hits. While reflecting on his remarkable musical success during an interview with Oprah Winfrey, Michael candidly shared that he felt he had sacrificed his childhood. <sighs> that is so stupid. That's the most ridiculous, horrifying story I've ever heard. It's crazy. However, the documentary Living with Michael Jackson shed light on the possibility that he may have also lost his innocence at that very young age. Michael told interviewer Martin Bosher that as a prepubescent boy, he regularly was forced to pretend to be asleep in the same room while his brothers had ass with groupies. One of his fans wrote, I'll never understand how a boy who was hurt so badly can turn into a beautiful, kind, caring, and gracious soul. Michael is gorgeous inside and out, and seeing him hurt and upset breaks my heart. I love and miss you so much, MJ. You're always in our hearts. Another one added, Michael's real deep voice came out when Bash had asked him, when he was beating you, did you hate him? That sent chills because you knew Michael meant it. I know he forgave Joseph for everything, but it's obvious Michael never healed from from it. Brooke Shields also gave an insight into how unhealthy Michael's relationship to S might have been in her memoir. The pair were close friends and in 1993 appeared to be dating, but according to the actress, nothing happened romantically between them. I would be like, oh, please knock it off. He was like this kid who would ask you about dating and romance, she wrote about Jackson, who was 20 when they first met in 1978. Nobody was telling him and nurturing this stuff, and I think he was terrified. He was terrified and sort of juvenile. I think there was an arrested development. 
The complex and deeply disturbing aspect of a grown man seeking comfort from children, as was observed in Michael Jackson's case, is an issue that raises important questions about the justifications given for such behavior. Notably, Joe Jackson, Michael's father, rationalized the A of his children by claiming that he was guiding them towards fame and wealth. This is tragically reminiscent of how some parents justified pushing their children into Michael Jackson's clearly unhealthy sphere, convincing themselves that they were facilitating their children's path to celebrity. Before his death in 2018, Joe Jackson did admit to beating his sons with a strap. He told Oprah Winfrey in 2010 he didn't regret it, saying it kept them out of jail and kept them right. It is a well-established fact that some adults who become A have themselves suffered A or neglect during their own childhood. Attempting to psychoanalyze a stranger is a complex undertaking, and with Michael Jackson, it is particularly intricate because he often employed a form of self-psychoanalysis as a facade for the truth. No more than a belt. What else would he use to hit you with? Iron cords. He ostensibly manipulated the public, as well as the parents of his victims, by asserting that his affinity for being around children had nothing to do with P, but was an expression of his yearning for a childhood denied to him by his father. However, two seemingly contradictory truths can coexist. Michael Jackson was undeniably one of the most talented performers in history, and he was also a predator. He mourned his lost childhood, and he was a P. Or you label or condemn me. Don't treat me like a criminal, because I am innocent. The effectiveness of using this method, whether through chemical or surgical means, to prevent S offenders from reoffending is inconsistent. As explained in Slate, castrated individuals can still potentially experience SL arousal and continue offending. This is because castration may only lower testosterone levels rather than eliminate them entirely, and some individuals might seek ways to boost their testosterone production. Additionally, even surgical castration may not completely eliminate S function, as the adrenal glands can still produce around 5% of testosterone. The same variability applies to chemical castration, where some individuals may retain some degree of S function with as many as 10% of those undergoing this treatment experiencing such effects. This interview at the cut with a man who chose chemical castration to deal with S addiction and save his marriage is illuminating. The man takes shots of Lupron to medicate his body into submission. It took two shots in his rear for him to notice it shutting down his S thoughts. He was still able to get an erection for a few months, and it was a full six months before he noticed a significant reduction in the compulsive thinking connected to his S urges to act outside his marriage. But as for the drug, the interviewer asks him if he ever worries it will stop working. His answer, I don't, but I can tell when the 30 days are up because I have more thoughts, he replies, which is a little concerning. I start to feel a tiny bit of urge, but it's all mental. I still can't get an erection. Some might argue that Michael Jackson's childhood A contributed to his later behavior as an offender against children, but this conclusion is not straightforward. A comprehensive investigation by Slate magazine into the widely discussed cycle of A theory revealed that the data suggests a more complex picture, indicating that a history of childhood abuse does not guarantee someone will go on to A children. It was the most humiliating ordeal of my life, but if this is what I have to endure to prove my innocence, so be it. In a 1989 study, psychologist and criminologist Kathy Spatz Widom found that victims of childhood abuse are at a higher risk of becoming criminals in adulthood. However, a 2016 study involving 38,282 Australian men found that among those who were as children, only 3% later committed S offenses, compared to 0.8% of the general population. This means that 97% of those who had experienced childhood abuse had not been charged with any form of S crime. While Michael Jackson's own experiences in childhood may have statistically increased the likelihood of his later actions, it cannot serve as an excuse or a definitive reason for his behavior as an adult. The relationship between childhood trauma and adult behavior is complex, and not a one-size-fits-all explanation. And Jesus said to love the children and be like children, and he always surrounded himself like with children. The debate about whether people can still listen to Jackson's music is a diversion from the more pressing issue at hand, the compelling evidence of widespread essay. 
Focusing on the personal choices of individual fans regarding Jackson's music is both unhelpful and narcissistic. It's partly why, in spite of the detailed allegations, many fans and even some fellow musicians continue to defend him and reject his accusers. They may be resentful at the prospect of losing the music they love. The critical matter is not whether someone chooses to listen to Jackson's songs, but why the public for so long overlooked what was evidently in front of them. That's it for today, folks. Until next time, goodbye.